I think that the trio of men who sang the um, the different factions song, they just love that song. And so that always took off. One of the people that I was most excited about because it made hair stand up on my arm was we managed to get a young singer. She was pretty young, not that long out of college, called Laura Tebbett to sing La Passionaria. And mm-hmm. that voice singing that material, I think is a really, really exciting thing. It was a big success in Barcelona, wasn't it? Were you surprised by that? Yes, yes, because uh, indeed uh, it was uh, uh, a little theater. It was a little production. There were no famous names. There were no celebrities in, in, the, in the cast. And, and well, we thought the people could be in the, uh, in the subject, of course, but it was a really, really, really big <laughs> success. And, <laughs> and it was a surprise for us there in Barcelona and especially out of Barcelona. When we, when we came to Madrid to the premiers, to the, the price of the musical theater. I thought we could go over and talk to uh, Hans Friedrichs in uh, New York. The York Theater, like the Arcola, is a smaller venue. And I wanted to sort of focus in uh, so that the the war was there, but it was not the primary focus. The people were the primary focus. And, And the question of why do you go and fight a war that isn't your own? So there had to be a way to find how to tell the story with the limited amount of uh, production members, the cast, the the musicians. In a way, I guess that's quite a a liberating thing because you know you had to do it that way rather than thinking there are so many ways to tell the story, but we, we have to tell this way. And I think they were incredibly well prepared for that. I think uh, this intimacy in an intimate venue uh, told a very big story in the end. I I was very happy. I was very, very impressed with the work and I I thought it was very emotional. I think what resonates with me is it was a show that we knew would have international appeal. We knew that it appealed to people from all over the world because of the nature of the story. And it proved it to us. We took it to New York and it resonated just as well there as it did in London. And that was an intensely gratifying experience, I think, to see that. And I think really that my overwhelming feeling about Goodbye Barcelona is one of gratitude. I think that we've been involved with something that is so important. I think we knew it at the time, but the fact that we're talking about a London Fringe production 10 years on says something, right? (laughs) That never happens. We rarely talk about big productions 10 years on. So I think for me, the workshops were lovely, but my overwhelming feeling has always been one of gratitude to be involved in something that was so touching, so important, so profound. You know, not many musicals get to talk with that kind of language. We, we were all very united. And yes. We, we formed like a family with super good energy. Yeah, the chemistry. The chemistry? <laughs> with the team, with all okay. actors and musicians. Yeah. It was awesome, just awesome. We had Goodbye Barcelona two times in uh, Luisenburg Festspiel. And, uh, that was the first time when uh, Carl was there and Judith, and they showed us what they did that the all the audience was very impressed that was the first time but uh, the second time that was this year when we are looking back what had we uh, resolved what we did we get and um, in that um, in that moment uh, we uh, offered in that showcase uh, one song from goodbye barcelona to this audience of about 40 theater makers working in musical we got very very good uh, reactions the play has to be obviously open in London, then in Barcelona, which is uh, an obvious uh, place to go. And the next stop should be Mexico. We did a presentation with uh, six or seven songs at Radio Nam. I, I think that's important that the Republic and its ideals pervived, uh, survived in Mexico and they made a huge change. So I think it's a must that we have this this show in Mexico.